Welcome to Grow As I Grow episode four. This is all about starting your squash and zucchini. You wanna wait till the nights are easily in the upper 50s, 60s, and you're getting 70 degree days, lower 80 degree days. That's when the squash, um, zucchini, cucumbers, even melons prefer to be in the garden. So we're gonna talk about starting them in cups and what you wanna look for, how quickly you wanna get them into the ground, and then I'm gonna show you how you set the ground up and plant the seeds directly in the ground. A couple of things, you wanna make sure that when you start your seeds, from when they germinate, when they break the surface, that you get them into the garden into two or three weeks, and let me show you why. So this squash has been in here for five weeks. It looks fairly healthy, starting to yellow. The bottom leaves will start to die out. They're voracious feeders. You have to keep them fed. But more importantly, they're starting to get flowers. If, and then there's a little male or female squash right there. That's a male flower. If your squash, your cucumbers are starting to flower, they've been in here too long. They're gonna be like bonsai plants. The roots get really uh, bound. And then when you put them into the ground, they're trying to grow fruit and flowers. They're just, past their prime. So you really want to time this the right way. You can see same thing starting to happen here. It's past its prime and these are probably at least four or five weeks out. This one, four weeks starting to flower. This is purchased at a store. If you go to a store you want to be looking for the same thing. You don't want your squash, your cucumbers to be flowering. You want them to look like this. This is picked up at a store. This is a, a squash plant. A couple big leaves, one, two main leaves, third main leaves starting, compact. This is in that range of two to three weeks. This is what you want your plant to look like and then get it into the ground. Again, another example of the plant starting to flower and that's just a no-no. So don't rush your cucumbers, your squash, your zucchini into the starting cells because they're just not going to be ready. Here's a cucumber that was planted too shallow. The seed wasn't deep enough and you can see the roots that are up here. And this again is past its prime. It's starting to produce flowers right in there. They'll be coming out. Again, another cucumber where the seed wasn't deep enough. I'll show you how to take care of that. You want your cucumbers to look something just like that. And it's really important to kind of, you know, take that in. Two to three weeks after germination, you have to have your final resting place, so to speak, for your plants. And these are just good examples of cucumbers that are nice and healthy. You can plant two cucumbers in one space. You're gonna to have to thin your squash and zucchini down to one plant. Watermelon are done the same way. These are watermelon plants that, watermelons can go a little bit longer. They can go into that third week, fourth week after they germinate and break the surface, but you want to get them into the ground. Do not let them get too large in these containers. I can't stress that enough because when you put them into the ground, they're going to struggle. They're going to be slow. They're going to get passed by seed you probably put in the ground. They're just not healthy plants. So squash seeds from the Grows I Grow collection, you're going to use any kind of soil really that's loose. It could be a potting mix, it could be a garden soil. This is my soil from out here mixed with some peat moss, nice and loose, loose, will drain well, holes in the bottom. You want a cup about this size so that the root system can develop and you're going to push these down a good half an inch. They're going to germinate really anywhere from four to seven days. I just set them on the surface, put in at least two seeds. This is the squash and zucchini plants. Cucumbers, you can put in three because you can keep two cucumbers in a space. Never just put in one seed or you could be waiting around for germination. That's not going to happen. Cucumbers again, half an inch down. And just cover them up. You would water these in, of course. When the weather is warmer, you can keep these outside. You just want to make sure that they don't dry out from the full sun. That's the biggest nemesis once frost is gone is that we put these out, it gets to be 75 degrees, full sunny day, these dry out, damage your plants. These have all been watered. They're fairly healthy green wise. Here's one that's a little more beat up and that's because watering, use, watering becomes an issue. The root systems take over, they get big, 
they dry out quickly. So again, you want your plants to look something like this, and then they're ready to get in the ground. So let me uh, set the ground up. We're going to set it up for planting direct seed and for planting these plants. All right, so I know that I said probably a dozen times, make sure you don't let your transplant overgrow in the container. That's probably one of the top two most important tips. Next thing is for the planting hole, I pretty much do it the same way. There's, you know, variations of course. Dig out a hole that's the depth of a standard spade. And then what I add to this, no matter what the consistency of my soil, about two shovelfuls worth of peat moss and then another shovel full. If you have compost, it should be compost, but a lot of times we don't have that. This is my 50-50 mix. It's 50% leaf grow and topsoil. That's to make something that's nice and loose. It's going to hold water right into there. One to two tablespoons of any organic fertilizer trying to stay around the 555. And just mix it all together. Compost is great if you have it. You can even swap out one of the shovelfuls of peat moss and use two big shovelfuls of compost. This is going to uh, hold moisture. We've just added some nutrients to it. It's going to keep everything nice and loose and allow for great root, root growth. I just pour it across the top, half of it across the top, and then the rest right into there. And what you want to do is now dig it down even further and just turn it. So you're trying to go down probably almost 16, 18 inches and just allowing your squash, your zucchini, your cucumber, your melon to really have nice loose soil to grow into. This is going to hold moisture. It's got fertilizer in there and just pull everything back in the hole. Turn it over again and just mix everything together well. I put my raised bed mix right on top of the grass so you're going to see some clumps of roots in here maybe, some grass, and then across the top another two to three tablespoons full of an organic fertilizer and then just reach in there, break up any clumps the clay is great for micronutrients. And you're just gonna make a little mound. And if you were going to plant directly as seeds, just like we did in the cups, you're gonna put down squash, a squash, press it in a half an inch, buried over, water it in. You're going to keep only one in there, so whatever one looks the strongest after it germinates, about a week later, remove the weakest one, keep the strongest one. For cucumbers, you'd put in three, press it down, half an inch, cover, and you can keep two or three per hill, depending on what variety you're growing. Let me just step over here, grab the cucumbers that I'm going to put in. I'm going, actually, cucumbers are going to go on the trellis. Let me grab the zucchini. This is going to be my squash and zucchini bed. You're going to plant this right to depth, maybe a little bit over. Water it in. There are two here. I'm going to let it grow for about a week. If they both are doing well, I'll just pick one. Press it down. And that's basically how I do my squash, my zucchini, my cucumbers, and my melons. I hope that gives you some idea of how to get these started in your garden. Now I want to also go over and show you how to do a tomato plant, which is a tomato plant, which is essentially the same, same with your peppers. But I know that in the other videos we were just getting them ready to come out. I'm a little bit behind, I apologize, getting this garden set up. And then I want to show you the squash, I'm sorry, the radishes and the lettuce that we planted in the last video. So this is my sunken container garden, but the process is the same. This is where I'm growing some peppers. So again, about a shovel full of peat moss. If you have 
compost. You can put in, you know, a scoop full of compost, mix it in there with the peat moss. It would be a one-to-one -one ratio and just mix it up. Nothing has to be perfect. In there, two to three tablespoons of the organic fertilizer, mix it up. This is, again is just to hold moisture. Peat moss has no nutritional value. The compost would. Compost would be nice, slow and low feeding. It would be outstanding. I just don't have any right now, really. I'm going to have to make that and set up the compost station this year, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. So what I do for peppers is I just, this is nice and loose already, dig a hole, you know, beyond the size of the whole pepper. We're not going to plant it that deep. Handful of the peat moss compost mix with the fertilizer in there and just mix it again nice and deep. This is where the root system is going to grow all the way down there. Super loose. You can see I can put the whole hand shovel all the way down there. I'm going to break up the top some. And we're going to plant from your transplants right just a little bit above the level right here. Peppers will root out a little bit. When we do the tomatoes, I'm going to use the uh, shovel and we're going to dig deeper. Um, they're bigger plants, they get bigger root systems. So right about to here. Just press it in and it peppers all ready to go. That's the chocolate beauty. In this small space for peppers, about one tablespoon. Just scratch it in. And that's how you transplant your transplants nice and quickly and then water, in it, water it in and the pepper will do wonderfully. All right, let's do the tomato. And the tomato is pretty similar. Digging a hole down 12 inches, two or three tablespoons into about a shovel full worth of compost. And you can see in the cucumbers, squash, zucchini, I use two shovelfuls of the peat moss. It's the principle. The principle is, is we're adding in something that's going to hold water, loosen the soil, make everything nice and fluffy. It doesn't have to be perfect. Basic organic fertilizer around a 555. Couple numbers up, couple numbers down on the NP and K. Doesn't matter. Tomatoes are a little bit different. Now these are what we were growing. This is the homestead. Grown as transplants. If you water these every seven to ten days with a water soluble fertilizer, they're going to stay looking extremely extremely well in here. Loosen up the root ball. We're pinching off about a third of the leaves and we're going to plant it to this deep. So we want a nice deep hole. Remove the soil out of there. Go down again as far as you can go. Try and get down 14, 16, 18 inches. Loosen it up. Drop in the peat moss. I'm not even going to use all of it. But what I know I'm creating is a great place for the root system to grow into. And then I'm just going to pull in the rest of the soil, mix it all together. Not as much as the cukes and the squash, maybe a tablespoon right on top. Let's just mix it all together. Rather than filling this whole bed with peat moss, fixing the whole four foot by four foot section, we're basically just doing the planting holes. I'm going to do a video on that on my main channel, just talking about what you're seeing here today. It's nice and loose. That's from the path. Some weed block. Loosen this. It'll be perfectly fine. Nice and flat. You want to get to a little bit deeper. A little bit about to here. And the tomato is planted. We drop in a stake and let this go. Water it in. And then I'll show you in future videos. We'll be watering these every 7 to 14 days with a water soluble fertilizer. And I'll show you how I do that. Okay, let me show you what's growing from the previous videos. So here's the uh, cut and come again lettuce that we planted 
really early and we put into flower boxes and I've cut out a couple heads of the romaine left the roots in it's starting to get warm so what's left in here is starting to grow a stalk that's called bolting it's going to get bitter and it's really because the uh, temperature is up into really the upper 80s for the last couple of days um, so we're not getting a really cool cool period we're getting cool weather and hot weather here's where I planted the radishes the row of lettuce back there. Hopefully our weather peaks at 80 for a couple of days and gets back down to the 70s, but we'll see if that grows. But here are the radishes. They're massive. So I have a lot of radishes in here. It'll be the first harvest out of these that we planted, I think, in the last video. And, you know, here's at least three of them. I can see more growing. Let's see if we can get a couple more to size here. We got, well oh, this one's a little bit smaller, but four radishes, it's going to go into the salad today. So I hope you enjoyed the series, Grow As I Grow. We'll continue working with the seeds in the package that you can get at my seed shop, but I'll show you principles that you can apply to all different vegetables in your garden. So we got stuff in the ground, we're going to get to water soluble fertilizers coming up, staking, pruning, pest management, disease management, and all of that as the summer goes along. Thanks for watching, and please check out my shop at therustedgarden.com.